Pretty much all of the numbers that you know, irrational, numbers fall into kind of two categories here, all real numbers anyways. You've got the big box over here of rational numbers, which fit pretty much all the numbers that you use, whole numbers, integers, blah, 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 you know, fractions, decimals, negative numbers, uh, whatever else, 2008. Blah, 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 blah. And then we've got what we're talking about today, which are the irrational numbers. And they are ones that are not quite as easy to work with. Remember, I pretty much gave you two examples of what you, for now, just need to know that are irrational numbers. Do you know what they were? One of them, Keith? Pi. Pi. Pi is an irrational number because if you look up there, you get all those digits and then. The really big thing about pi is that those three little dots at the end tell you it goes on forever. It never stops. And the other thing that our irrational numbers will be roots that don't work out. The square root of 2, the square root of 11, the square root of 13. All of those are irrational because they just don't work out nicely for us. Okay, you cannot get, you, know, you cannot get them to come out to nice, easy numbers. But even though the irrational don't make a lot of sense, you st should still be able to come close to what the real values are. And the book kind of throws, you know, uh, do I have some extra room here? I do. If you're looking at a number line, let's say this is 0, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, where will some of the, the beginning square roots fall? For example, where is the square root of 1? Is the, is the square root of 1 a rational or irrational number? Laney? Rational. It's rational because there is a square root of 1, which is 1. The square root of 1 falls right here because it is 1. And we call it 1. We'll always call it 1. We don't, you never really leave something as a square root of 1. Okay. Now, what about the square root of 4? Square root of 4, rational or irrational? Well, rational. rational, and where is it? It is right here at 2. Here's the square root of 4. It is the number 2. That means all the square roots between 1 and 4 have to fall between the numbers 1 and 2. Okay, So in here is going to be the square root of 2 and the square root of 3. The square root of 3 being closer than the square root of 4 than it is the square root of 1. So, you know, if you know, and close is going to be good enough, we could probably actually do that. So we look and see. Let's do that just to figure out exactly what it is. Let's go and find more tools. Let's hit calculator and look and see. What is the square root of 2? Square root of 2 is, square root of 2 is, by the way, here, I'll use this. Notice how that's not an equal sign, but a squiggly equal sign? Squiggly equally signs mean close to, but not exactly. Uh, wait, where'd it go? Where'd my calculator go? And you can see it keeps going a long ways and then it stops there because that's all the digits they let you have. 1.414. Somebody gave you the square root of two dollars, they gave you a dollar forty-one cents, maybe a dollar forty-two. The square root of three is very close to here. Three squared is one point seven three two. If you got the square root of three dollars, you got a dollar seventy-three or whatever it is. Uh, same thing here. Three is the same thing as the square root of nine, right? So you've got five, six, seven, and eight that all fall in here. You got the square root of five, the square root of six, the square root of seven, and the square root of eight that all fall in between the square root of four and the square root of nine. So you should be able to you should be able to throw out there a pretty legitimate guess as to what a square root is. For example, if I gave you, um, you know, the square root of 35. Square root of 35 is irrational, but you should be able to tell me that the square root of 35 is awful close to 
Square root of 35 is awful close to Elijah. Yeah. And you would know that because, thinking about the perfect squares, you know, what is 6 is what? The square root of what? Yeah. Yeah, 6 is the square root of 36, so that's awful close to that. The next lowest one would be the square root of 5, which is 5. Okay, so all, I mean, knowing this, you know that what has to fall between 5 and 6? The square root of 26, the square root of 27, the square root of 28, the square root of 29, the square root of 30, the square root of 31, the square root of 32, the square root of 33, the square root of 34, a little crazy here, 34, the square root of 35. All have to fall between 5 and 6 because the square root of 25 is 5 and the square root of 36 is 6. So all of those square roots have to fall between the numbers 5 and 6. With, you know, square root of 30 probably coming close to being right in the middle, as it would be fun stuff, don't you think? Um, and then here's a good one for you. Because we can do this now, if I know that the area of this square, the area of this square is 3. If I know the area of that side is 3, how long would each side have to be? It's a square, so it's the same number. How long would each side have to be in order to give me a square whose side is 3? Mitch says, no, because if each side was 3 and I multiplied them together, I get 9. If each side was 3, the area of the square would be 9, so it's not. And here's, here's what you have to think, this, kids. We don't know what this is, right? Let's call it S. I know that S times S has to give me 3, correct? And S times S is S squared. What, what is it that, what, what thing, what thing did we just talk about that said what number times itself gives you this? What mathematical thing did we just talk about? Okay? Square root. So I want to know what, in order to get this to equal 3, I know that S has to be the square root of 3 because that's what this asks me. What same number times what gives me 3? So guess what? Each side has to be the square root of 3. Mitch is looking at that like, hmm, that could be kind of deep. Let me give you a different one. What if my square had an area of 16? That one's a pretty easy one, right? Cameron, because it's... Right, each side would have to be 4. Well, guess what the square root of 16 is? 4. What if the area of my square was uh, 13? What number times itself gives you 13? Anybody want to take a shot? Riley? Nope, six and a half times six and a half is going to give me at least 36 and a half of a body. That's a big number. Jaden? Are you just guessing? I don't want to do that math, though. I don't think it's it can't It can't be right because, because it's going to be an irrational number. It can't be 3.25. All right. We haven't made the connection here. Let's go back. Look. Go back to this. When I wanted an area of the square to be 3, my answer was the square root of 3. When I wanted the area of the square to be 16, my answer was the square root of 16, which is 4. Well, if I want my area to be 13, grace Christ, 
Exactly. What number times itself gives you 13? Well, that would be the square root of 13. Now, again, going back to what we just talked about, the square root of 13 would be close to what number? In reality, four. four times four would be 16, and three times three would be nine. Yeah, you're right. It probably is closer to four than it is three. Yeah, these sides would be awful close. They'd have to be between three and four at some point. Now, would that give you close to 13 if you squared those? Three times three is nine. Four times four is 16. So, yeah, you're within the ballpark. Uh, here we go. Let's see if everybody caught on to this. Let's say the area of my square is 5,375. What would be what would each side have to be? Tell me the rest of you are just shy and don't want to say it, but you really know. Josh? It would be the square root of 5,375. It would be the square root of 5,000. Which would be close to what? Anybody? Probably not. Probably going to struggle on that one. What times what could be close to 5,000? Well, it's 20 times 20. 400, that's a little bit less than 40 times 40? 1,600, a little lower. 50 times 50? 2,500. 60 times 60? 3,600. 70 times 70? 4,900. 80 times 80? 6,400. So that has to be between, somewhere between 70 and 80, don't you think? Yeah, that's wrong. That's probably a good guess. Um, I don't know if that's, that might be enough brain overload for one day. What do you think? They're called irrational for a reason, people. If they're irrational, 